hi everyone welcome to this tutorial now in this video i'm going to teach you how you can make a photorealistic rendering in revit without any plugin at all and i'm also going to be showing you how you can set up the sun paths and turn on the ambient shadows and lights as you can see on this drawing um i'll be teaching you some of the tricks that comes to play when it comes to um rendering setup in revit so as to get a good outcome at the end of your rendering and then having said that we will just go straight into the video and just before we do that i'd like you to go ahead and like this video subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so because it helps me a lot and make sure you share the video and leave a comment below the comment section so that you get to see more uploads each time we make an update let's get started and in case you are new in revit and you wonder how we got here this is a camera perspective of the project and this picture is taken from the ground floor and then this part is the part you prepare for rendering you don't just render your 3d view for example you have the 3d here you have the 3d like this and you, you want to render a perspective of this design what you have to do is to go to the ground floor this is level one let me take it at level one now you can see the floor plan this is actually an imported file the here represent the first floor and here represent the ground floor so you repeat your camera by coming to this place and you click you see the camera you pick the camera and place it in on any position you desire let's say i place it here and click and click on the second point in order to get a perspective so you click on the second point to get something like this you use the drag points to open it very well so and you get something like this you can try adjusting it if you're not happy with what you have there and take note when you try to reduce the pixel size it also determines how fast the rendering is going, to, is going to stay if the size is large enough and it consumes a lot of mb it's going to take longer time to render than when it's constrained just like i'm trying to reduce the size um that's number one point number two at this point you can try to to position it the way you want just like this and if you're happy with that you can leave it like that but you don't you have to be careful when you do that you can also decide to this is your visual style you can also decide to put it either on any of this we have the hidden lines which is already on the hidden line activated you can turn it into a realistic for you to see how the design looks like okay you can see the colors the materials has been worked on i have actually changed the material so i have a video about how to change materials in case you don't know how and i'm going to leave a link of that video here and also leave it below the comment section so you can see that video on how to change materials so this is actually the desired material i want it to have this point now is to set up the background so that when you are working on the lightning and each time you apply is going to reflect here on the background for you to see what you're setting up so how do we do that is to come to this point you say graphic display on your project browser if you go edit and you will see this dialog box come out another way to find that is to come to your visual style here and when you click it open you see graphic display options at the top of it you click it the same options the same dialog box appears and at this point the first thing i think you should do and which i normally do is to go to the background and click the background and you come to this place you drag you drop it down you see gradient you, see, you can set it at none which is where it is that's why everywhere is white like this 
you can set the sky you know or i prefer to use this or you import an image right from your drive but i don't want to do that now but we can do that later but let's just use this gradient to set up the sky color the horizon color and the ground color so if you go apply apply you see the background has changed now with this we will be able to know what we are doing when we turn off when we turn on the sun part the ambient lights and shadows you can see it reflect there before you do your rendering and that's for background and at this point you can also smoothen the lines if you say apply you can see the changes there is very literal you can see it and then the shadows as well you can cast a shadow on it and also a shadow show the ambient shadows and when you click on it and say apply you can see the shadow reflections appear there and then the reflection is determined by the option you choose and that we are going to be working on that later and here is the lightning you can work on it directly from this point and here is already unrealistic as we know but let's just move out of this place and then use the rendering dialog box to do other setup you say okay So you have done the first thing now the second thing you want to do is okay let's try adjusting this car and moving it a bit close to the other side okay the next thing you want to do is to go straight to the rendering dialog here is the rendering dialog you click on it and then you have the dialog box appear so what do you do with this dialog box right now here if you watch you see render and that's after you must have done your setup you can just hit the render button there and it will start rendering or before then you might choose to crop a region where you want to render if you have a region like that you hit on the box there you can drag it to enclose the portion you want to render but that's not what we want we just want to render the entire window the entire window we have here is what we want to render so let's do away with that then what you also want to do is this is the resolution where you set it up if you have it on screen here it means you just want to do a preview of what the rendering will look like um when you are done and you can preview that and return just like we have this now let's say i want to do a preview of it if i hit render you will just see a quick at the end of the rendering so let's just watch and see and so you can see what i mean it's just a quick one and it just gives you an insight of what is going to look like but that's not what we want so what you do here is to return back to show model it comes back to normal and then in to do the proper rendering setup you click on printer when you click on this printer you see all these becomes activated you turn them on this is your dpi your dpi is actually where you set up the pixel the resolution of your project so it's 150 dpi but you can come and increase it for higher resolution to 600 and you have this and this you see you you have you now have 5458 pixels by the width and 4094 pixels by the length and the uncompressed image size is 85.2 mb so the higher the resolution the longer it stays to finish rendering but if for example you decide to keep it here because of time we will not be able to experiment that you decide to keep it at 75 and you will see it's now 1.3 mb so the higher it is and this 1.3 mb even if you set it at the highest and the best level of rendering setup is still going to render fast because the mb is small it's minimal 
so i choose to leave it at 600 you see 85.2 mbs that's for that now we come to the lightning which we also had when we opened the other dialog box our graphic display dialog box we saw this lightning but here i choose to do the setup here if we had done it there it will also reflect here but actually why we have it here here is it actually here actually why we have it here is that you can decide to set it up at this point let me show you you can decide to do all of this setup here and save the view as a template so that each time you want to do a rendering on that project you've already done the setup and saved it so all you have to do is just to go hit your render but because i want to show you this that's why i have to come and do it here we are not setting it up as a template or anything so what you do again at this point on that sun you can move this to any direction you want you see sun only you can decide to turn it to sun and artificial because it's exter exterior rendering if it was interior rendering you can also see you see sun and artificial on in, under interior okay you can also see interior sun only now of course the sun will be shining from interior part and be reflecting from outside so in this case i'm going to be choosing the ex under exterior sun and artificial so i choose that but now under the sun setting you have this box here if you click it open you have the opportunity to set up your solar study depending on what you want say for example you choose steel under your solar study this steel will bring we bring out all of this now under the day as you can see the date is the current date i am doing this recording which you can set up here too on your system and then the time and then again the location that you choose that we bear the rendering we bear its nomenclature such as here you have boston ma i i think boston ma might be in us in the united states and if you need to change this to whichever location you desire you can choose a location in england you can choose a location in your country you can come here and click but you have to be connected to the internet to be able to do that as you can see i'm not connected to the internet so i don't have time for that now i just want to show you this and you can see if you search for that location while you're connected to the internet google will bring it up for you what that means is that your rendering is taking up the nature of your of your climatic solar system then if you choose single day you also have the same thing also have the sunrise to sunset you can choose to check it if you apply it you see the changes happen there okay whichever one you apply you also see the changes will just occur immediately for single day but apart from this in session you can see one day solar system you can see summer solace but if you want to try them out on your own each one you click say for example you have this summer solace system if you apply it you just see how it changed if you say winter solace solar study you click on it apply you also see the changes if you click on this spring equinox solar study you apply you see the changes you do this you apply you see the changes what this is telling you is that um, each and every one of these seasons will affect the way the sun will behave on your project now even if you had to leave it here you will also notice you have the same option you click on this and apply you will see the positioning watch the ambient shadows watch the direction of the sun parts they are all affected in one way or the other you notice this okay they are all affected in one way or the other because what happens is that at every solar study 
the sun position the azimuth position and the altitude of the sun changes and it affects the way the shadow appears on your project so if you choose this now and say apply you see you choose this winter solar study apply you see it changes you see one year solar study apply you also see the changes but i don't go disturbing myself over all of this whenever i am doing rendering the favorite way i do my rendering is just to come to lighting and i click on this lighting and the azimuth position here is 135 degrees actually azimuth there azimuth angle is the horizontal angle with respect to north of the sun's position and this horizontal coordinates defines the sun's relative direction along the local horizon that's what azimuth is then the altitude is now position of the sun the zenith position of the sun then here you can see the ground plane at level so is going to be reflecting direct from the ground the level zero so and you see here the way i do it is just to come here and i set up the sun either sunlight from the top right or sunlight from the top left so let's try it out and you will see the difference now you have sunlight sunlight from the top right so if i say apply you will notice the sunlight comes from this part so the shadow of the sunlight this part will be shaded in a way and the sunlight is hitting from this top right and if you choose this sunlight from the top and apply you notice the sunlight is coming from here and this part is shaded so i just like to use this it's as simple as that when i do that i say okay and you also notice if the sunlight is coming from the, the azimuth angle changes here is now here now is 225 and here is 35 as you can see so i just say okay you might just want to explore the lightning and see which suits your fancy best and you can stick to it okay here we have artificial light and under this portion whatever you turn off here is turned off there whatever you turn on here is turned on there so you just leave it the way it is and say okay then the next thing you want to do is the sky is the background you see sky few clouds so the sky is few clouds because we have that set up already so you can choose that the, there is no cloud at all you can choose that is very cloudy you can say few clouds okay now that it's few clouds okay let's not just bother doing a preview of it it's going to take our time or it can be cloudy it can be very cloudy it can be this but my favorite way of setting this up is to choose an image and then i will just move because i have some downloaded images already on my drive all I have to do is to click on this part and I just navigate through my drive and pull it out. Here I have all this. Let me turn this to list so I can quickly locate where it is. Okay, so I have this background images. Let's put it on thumbnail. I have all these backgrounds but this is not what i'm looking for okay now i can choose to pick this i can choose to pick this background and apply it it means this is the background that is going to cover up this place and at the end of the rendering the building will be sighted in the midst of this background and this is going to be the cloud you're going to be seeing and so you hit okay you don't need to do any other setup here because the image has fit into it properly so you say okay this is the image extension and then the image is there so you've done that setup you can also decide to adjust the exposure 
and the light exposure is you see a highlight okay this is brighter this is darker so what i do many a time to affect the brightness of the rendering at the end of the day is just to drag this highlight to the end by you know person if you apply that brightness now you can you see it affect the drawing there and i say okay so you have done that but here on this draft you have have a couple of options here yeah? like i told you before that draft is when you want to do a quick preview of what it will look like but at the end of the day that's not how you're going to set it here we have me draft medium high best so you can choose to put it at best but that's only if you have maybe a free computer and undisturbed computer because it's going to render for like two days uh, let's say 48 to 72 hours if you put it at best it's going to take a whole lot of time it's going to be photo realistic you're not going to believe it but for the sake of this video we are going to leave it at high it's going to take time too there is also another place where you can edit and customize it the way it wants like here now you put it on high if you copy to custom it means you are trying to customize it to the best way you want so here you can see render by time you say render by level render by time and until satisfactory so when you put it on the satisfactory it takes 72 hours it's your business if you have all the time in your hand to do that rendering but let's say okay because we're not going that way and of course the outcome is also going to be perfect you're going to like it your client is going to like it so you can leave it at high now this rendering setup is done at the end of the rendering you can save it here to the project or you can export it to your desktop through this place let me show you through this place you can navigate to your documents or your desktop and change the name to whichever whatever you want uh, and save it there but it's going to come out as a jpeg file not as pdf but maybe on another video i'm going to show you how you can save on a pdf file and other file formats too but here is going to come out by default as jpeg and then you save but that's after rendering anyways but just before rendering when you are done with your setup like this then you hit render when you hit render you see you notice it starts reading you just have to allow it for a while and it's going on is still less than one percent and i'm just gonna speed this up for the sake of this video yeah and in the end we will have this as you can see the final outcome of the rendering and uh, but i uh, trust me you can get something better you can get something better if you set it at best you can get something better than this just for the sake of this tutorial we can make deal with this i just want to show you how you can set up the rendering and then the rendering dialog box and then for a better and a fast beautiful output of your rendering and then you can also export this image straight to your desktop like i've already done to this um, you can see it is exported and is in jpeg file so this is what it takes to do a rendering a quick one in revit without a plugin such as v-ray i'm just gonna ask you to hit that like button on this video subscribe to this channel because i bring you beautiful updates like this every day and then make sure you share this video with your friends so more people will get to see it if it has helped you thanks for watching